Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at the Windows 10 tablet mode and comparing it with the Windows 8 tablet mode. So Windows 10's tablet mode isn't amazing. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not pushing any boundaries and it's definitely not as intuitive as it used to be on Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. When Microsoft first introduced Windows 8 and 8.1, uh, the OS was primarily built for tablets, which was great for tablet based devices, but not so great for desktops. And at the time, Windows 10, Windows itself was primarily used on desktops and still is today. So bolting a tablet experience on top of Windows probably wasn't the best idea unless you were running it on a tablet, which the Surface RT and the Surface 2 and even the Surface 3, the original Surface Pros as well, all benefited greatly from this UI because it made sense. This was a fantastic touch-based UI for tablets. But when Windows 10 came along, things changed. Microsoft sort of stepped back from the tablet experience. It's still here, but uh, it's definitely not as good as it used to be. So for example, and this is the biggest thing to me, uh, just some of the, the nice things, the gestures, the animations, a lot of that's missing from the Windows 10 tablet experience. So if we open up an app, for example, here, if I tap on the Microsoft Store tile, you'll see that the app simply it didn't even work. Let's try that again. Tap on it. You'll see the app simply fades in and then it's launched. That's okay. But if we look at Windows 8, for example, you'll see that if I tap on an icon, uh, the animation is a lot more involved than just fading into view. So if I tap on the store icon here, you'll see that the app tile flips and sort of zooms in and fills the screen. And it's a much nicer animation than the Windows 10 one, which as again, if we go back to start here, you'll see is just a simple fade effect. It's not great. Windows 8 says, you know, a lot more magnificent, if you will. I tap on it and it flips into view and it looks fantastic. Now, this app doesn't seem to be working right now, but uh, you get the idea. The animation for opening apps on Windows 8 was much better. It was a much more connected experience. And, and this is what the iPad does really well. On iOS 11 and iOS 12, tapping on an icon will fill the screen th from that icon. It's not a fade effect, which is, you know, rather simple. It actually fills the screen and is a connected animation and it feels really nice. Uh, and that also plays with gestures as well. On Windows 10, uh, tablet mode does feature some gestures, but they're not very good. So if we swipe in from the left here, um, you'll see that that takes me to task view. However, that gesture does not follow the animation that just played there. Uh, if we go back to start here and do it, you know, I'm getting the app that's sort of zooming out from the bottom right up to the top left corner. That's not what I'm doing here. I am swiping in from the left. So you know, that gesture should be following my my finger and what I'm doing and swiping in from the left. This is what Windows 8 got right. So if you open up an app here, let's open up Internet Explorer and I swipe in from the left, you'll find that the, the previous app actually follows my finger. Look at this, it's stuck to my finger and it's following me. Now, all I need to do here, if I want to go back to the last app, I just swipe in and there I am. I can do that multiple times and keep swiping between apps. And that's very quick. And if I want to see all of my open apps, I just swipe in and swipe out, and there it is. Then I can tap on one, or if I really want to, I can uh, drag one out like that as well. And that also allows me to dock an app into multitasking also. On Windows 10, this experience doesn't exist. If I'm in an app and I want to go back to my a different app, so seven up two apps here, seven up settings as well. So if I want to quickly get back to the Microsoft Store, I do the swipe, and then I get taken to task view. I don't get to just jump straight back into the previous app. I am now taken into this UI, which I can then tap on the app that I want to go to. You know, that's fine, but it's not great. And also the just the animation, the gesture-based animation here doesn't make sense. Swiping in from the left should not have the app zoom up to the top right to the top left of the screen from the bottom right. That just doesn't make sense. It should be following my finger. And the same goes for, for the action center here. If I swipe in from the right, the action center does actually swipe out, and that's kind of what should be happening here, except it's not following my finger. And this is a very sort of nitpicky thing here, but you'll see what I mean when I demo it to you. So on Windows 8, if we go back to start here. Um, swipe in from the right, you get to start like that. If I swipe in from the right, the charms bar, as it used to be called, actually follows my finger. It's stuck to me. It's following what I'm doing. On Windows 10, it's not doing that. If we go back to start here and swipe in from the right, you'll see that the animation just plays out regardless of where I'm swiping or how fast I'm slow I'm swiping. So as you see here, I haven't let go of the gesture yet, yet the animation is complete and is no longer following my finger. In fact, it was never following my finger. And that's because the animation is sort of... It's a set out animation. It's not following my finger. It's not, you know, doing as I, I want it to do. It's just simply playing an animation that's already been predetermined. And that's kind of, you know, it's 
the, the, the animation here makes much more sense for the gesture you're pulling off, but it's still not great compared to say the charm spot where whenever I swipe in, it's actually following my finger. It's just a lot nicer. Now, again, most people wouldn't even notice this, but it's the small things like that that make all the difference in Windows 10 and tablet based experiences. Now the start screen itself is definitely not great on Windows 10. It's It does the job, but it's definitely not as beautiful as it used to be in Windows 8. Also again, there's not many animations now. So, you know, tapping on an icon doesn't flip it into view. It just simply fades into the app. And also there's no way to get through to all the UIs in the start experience just by swiping. To get to the apps view on Windows 10, I have to tap on the app icon up here to get to the all apps list. Whereas on Windows 8, I could simply just swipe up almost like magic. It's fantastic. It's much more, it's fast and fluid. And this is an actual phrase that Microsoft used to use when describing Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. It was a fast and fluid experience. And they weren't wrong. It really is. On Windows 10, that fast and fluidity is no longer apparent. It's very much a clunky tap here, push there experience. And the gestures, again, are very basic. The one swiping from the left doesn't even follow the gesture. You can still swipe down. On Windows 8, you could also swipe down. And that does what it says on the tin, which is actually quite nice. That's the only one that seems to follow your finger still. But there's no um, sort of app way to minimize an app like you can on iPad. On iOS 12, you can swipe up from the bottom and that would close the app or at least throw it back to the start menu or start screen. Uh, but on Windows 10, you can't do that. You just have to press on the start button, which is very sort of, that's an old way of doing things. Most platforms these days are adopting gestures in some way. Windows 10 still isn't doing that. So that's another thing even though Windows 8 already had it in the before, which is fantastic. Windows 8 had gestures long before iOS did and even Android. Now it's also worth noting that Windows 8 wasn't the first to implement gestures. WebOS was way before that was doing gestures and I'm sure there's other platforms that have also just done gestures before Windows. But um, it's funny how Windows 8 did it and Windows 10 doesn't. It's, it's, it's upsetting really because the gestures were part of what made Windows 8.1 great on tablets. Now quickly going back to the tablet, uh, the start screen experience, it's not as beautiful. So as you can see here, I've got my tiles. This is the default layer. I haven't changed this. And behind it is just the desktop background. And I can change this by going into settings here. Going into personalization. Uh, background and simply changing the background is let's change it to that and I can also change my the accent color of the tiles as well So let's make it that color So if I go back to start I have now changed the look of my start menu or start screen and you know It's looking fine, but compared to the customization options of Windows 8.1 There's no comparison if we swipe in from the left here go to settings go to personalize There's a whole bunch of different sort of backgrounds for the start screen itself That's separate from being able to set your own desktop background So as you can see here for now, this is the default blue one But look there's loads of different ones here, which all look fantastic and some of them even have a uh, sort of parallax uh, Animation based background so if I swipe here you can see the backgrounds moving around and if I swipe up here The wallpaper follows me through to the apps area this kind of stuff doesn't exist on Windows 10. It's just the background. There's no parallax effects here. And it's really kind of just dull. It's just a simple, here's your home screen. Here are your app icons. What's more, we've also got sort of the, again, gesture based option. So I can pinch the start screen here to sort of go into this overview mode, which is always handy. And I can zoom back in if I want to. Windows 10 has no such pinch gesture. And also if I'm on the apps list here and I want to see like jump to a different letter quickly, I can quickly pinch out tap on W and it takes me straight to W. Guess what? Windows 10 doesn't have this support. I can't pinch here to zoom and, and see an overview. There is an overview UI and it's just by tapping on the letter here, but there's no way to pinch to see that UI, which, you know, why not? <laughs> the UI exists here. Why can't I get to that with a gesture by pinching? It just doesn't, it's just not, it's not very intuitive, which is the problem with Windows 10's tablet mode. Now, the other big problem with Windows 10's tablet mode is that it's not a full screen experience in some apps. So if we open up the Microsoft Store here, you'll see that um, for the most part, it's a full screen experience. This UI at the top remains there, which is fine. It's there for a reason. But at the bottom, we still have the taskbar, but it's not really the taskbar in Windows 10 unless you configure it to be. By default, it's simply a navigation bar with the time and day and a few system icons on it. At the bottom, I, I you know, it's kind of weird at the bottom and the, you know, j navigation buttons down here on the left, are, it's an interesting design choice. It's not very intuitive. Again, the word intuitive comes up a lot here. So Windows, uh, so Microsoft Edge, for example, doesn't have a tablet UI at all, as you can see here. It's just the desktop UI. Now there is a full screen mode if you press F11. 
And then you've got it in here like this and it looks, you know, just like Windows 8 one does. And I can swipe down from the top here and that brings that up. And that's how it should be by default, except it's not. Why isn't it? This should be how Edge behaves by default when in tablet mode. I shouldn't be able to see the Chrome UI when I'm browsing the web after I've inputted my website or, you know, I'm done with the Chrome at the top here. It just, there's a lot of things that Microsoft aren't doing on Windows 10's tablet mode that would make sense. Now, it's probably worth pointing out that Windows 10 does do some things better than Windows 8 when it comes to tablet mode. Windows 10's tablet mode isn't all bad. For example, Windows 10's tablet mode treats desktop apps the way it's supposed to when in tablet mode. Whereas on Windows 8, desktop apps were like a whole separate alien thing compared to the tablet experience on Windows 8. So for example, if I open up the uh, file explorer here, it boots in full screen, just like it would on a tablet or just like it would on a tablet based slash UWP app. And I can now use the same sort of gestures slash behaviors for this desktop app. Now there is still the taskbar, the title bar at the top of the window, which still has the window controls, obviously. There's not much you can do about that, but otherwise it still you know, follows the same rules and behaviors as other apps. So I can still use the swipe down gesture to drag it along. I can also swipe from the left here to bring up task view. And open up another app here and I can pin this to the side and for some reason that didn't pull up. But usually what would happen there is I would get an overview of all the apps that are open and I would then be able to switch to another one just like this. Windows 8 doesn't do this. If I go to Windows 8 and I try to uh, snap an app alongside the other one, it just gives me a blank screen. There's no sort of overview of what my apps or of what apps are open. I can do that by swiping from the left here, pulling that in and there you go. Again, which was kind of confusing, but that's how you did it on Windows 8. And even then, if I go and try to open a desktop app such as File Explorer, it boots me into the desktop and opens it in a window, which, you know, isn't great. So now I'm in an entirely new UI. And to get that running alongside my um, my modern app, I first have to drag this to the top to full screen it. Then I need to open up my other app and then I need to drag in the desktop experience and pin it like that. So, you know, it's not great uh, compared to Windows 8. So Windows 8's experience is much better. So... What really needs to happen here is Microsoft needs to blend both the Windows 8 tablet experiences and Windows 10 tablet experiences, bring back the animations and the nice gestures and the fluidity of Windows 8 uh, on top of the improvements that Windows 10's tablet mode brings. So there you have it guys, that's a quick look and comparison at the Windows 8 and Windows 10 tablet mode experiences. Windows 8's definitely a better tablet experience, which uh, would benefit devices like the Surface Go greatly. Whereas Windows 10, uh, the Surface Go and Windows 10 it's going to be a rough experience, especially when compared to the iPad, because the iPad has the tablet experience nailed and the Surface Go is arguably the most tablet like a Surface device has been in a while. It's a consumption device and it needs a good tablet experience. And Windows 10's tablet mode is definitely not up to scratch as of right now. But for now, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.